in this video, we're going to talk about compound interest. And the reason we're talking about this is because it's an excellent example of exponential functions. A bank can compound interest in multiple ways. It can compound the interest annually, that's every year, monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, etc. In general, the more compoundings you do of the interest, the more interest the account makes. But that's just to a point. At some point, it's actually not really helpful to continue to compound interest because the growth isn't fast enough. Let's examine this a little bit more closely. We're going to use simple amounts in order to make the calculations a little bit easier. So we're going to start a bank account with $100 and the account is going to earn 5% compounded yearly. We have a table with four columns, the year, the growth factor, the calculation, and the balance. We're going to look at years 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 and calculate the balance for those four years. So in year zero, the balance is $100. The account is earning 5% and it's compounded annually, which means our growth factor is 1.05. So when we go to calculate the balance in year one, we wanna multiply 100 by 1.05 to get $105. In year two, we do the calculation for the balance as $100 times 1.05 times 1.05 or $100 times 1.05 to the second power. This gives us a balance of $110.25. Similarly, we can do the calculation for year three. It's 100 times left parentheses, 1.05 right parentheses to the third power, which results in $115.76. For the fourth year, our calculation is 100 times left parentheses, 1.05 right parentheses to the fourth power, and the balance in year four would be $121.55. Slowly over time, you can see the balance increases as we continue to add interest. Now really, we just did that table to have a reference point for the other types of compoundings that we can do. So now let's start this same bank account with $100, earning 5%, but now we're going to compound quarterly. And if we compound quarterly, what that means is that we are taking that 5% and dividing it by four and actually doing 1.25% every quarter. And we can write 1.25% as 0 0.0125 as a decimal, which means that our growth factor for the whole problem is gonna be 1.0125. This table has five columns, the year, the quarter, the growth factor, our calculation, and the balance. In the year column, we start with year zero, then a quarter of a year, half a year, three quarters of a year, one year, etc. For quarters, we start with quarter zero, then one, two, three, four, etc. The growth factor, as I mentioned, is always 1.0125. And let's take a look at the calculations. For the first quarter, the calculation will be 100 times 1.0125 for a balance of $101.25. In quarter two, the calculation is $100 times left parentheses, 1.0125 right parentheses to the second power. The balance is $102.52. For quarter three, the calculation is 100 times 1.0125 to the third power. The balance is $103.80. In quarter four, we finally gotten to the end of year one. The calculation is 100 times 1.0125 to the fourth power, or $105.09. Compare this to what we got from doing annually calculated interest, which was exactly $105. So we have managed to make nine extra cents here. Why don't you go ahead and pause this video and see if you can complete the calculations for year 1.25, year 2, and year 4. All right, we're back. Let's see how you did. Year 1.25 is quarter 5, and so our calculation would be 100 times left parentheses 1.0125, right parentheses to the fifth power, which is $106.41. Year 2 is actually quarter Eight. The calculation there would be 100 times left parentheses, 1.0125, right parentheses, to the eighth power, which is 110.45. And finally, year four is quarter 16. Every year has four quarters, so four times four gives us 16. The calculation would be 100 times 1.0125 raised to the 16th power, 
resulting in $121.99. Compare this to the result with simple annual interest, which was $121.99. And 55 cents. So this compounding quarterly has netted us about 44 cents more over four years, which doesn't seem like a lot. But if this was a hundred million dollars, that would be a much bigger difference between the compounding and the annual interest. All right, I have one more scenario and I would like you to try this one. Again, we have a bank account with hundred dollars, the account earns 5%, but now we're going to compound weekly, which means that we are going to have to take 5% divided by 52 to get the weekly interest rate and the growth factor that accompanies that. You're going to find the balance for week one, week two, week 52, and for year four. Pause the video, come back when you're finished. And we're back. Let's start with that 5% divided by a 52. That results in 0.0962% interest or as a decimal, 0.000962. So a very small growth rate. The growth factor is going to be 1.000962. And we're gonna use that for the entire problem. We have an initial balance of 100. Let's calculate the new balance after one week. And in this case, I'm gonna take my balance out to the nearest 10th of a cent or three decimal places because the growth of interest is so slow when we compound by weeks. The first calculation is for week one. We would take $100 times, left parentheses, 1.000962, right parentheses, to the first power. The result is 100 point zero nine six in week two the calculation would be 100 times 1.000962 1 and that growth factor is raised to the second power the result in dollars is 100.192 now we jump ahead to year one that's week 52 the calculation here would be 100 times left parentheses 1.000962 close the parentheses, put that to the 52nd power, and we have 105.127. And then finally, year four, that's gonna be 52 weeks times four, which is 208 weeks. So the calculation is 100 times left parentheses, 1.000962, raised to the 208th power, or 122.1. One, four. This final one, I'm going to go ahead and round to the nearest cent. When we calculated the annual interest, it was $121.55. Our calculation with quarterly compoundings was $121.99. Here, compounding weekly, we have $122.14. So you can see we did make a little bit more but only 15 cents more by compounding weekly. So when we went from annual to quarterly, we gained 44 cents. When we went from quarterly to weekly, we only gained 15 cents. Now, hopefully you see a pattern forming here on how we do these calculations. We've done enough of them now. This process leads us to essentially a general formula for compound interest. And that formula is capital B equals capital P, times left parentheses, one plus R over N, those are lowercase r and lowercase n, close the parentheses, and then raise that to the N times T power, lowercase n and lowercase t. Now let me go through each of these variables. P is the principal invested, that's how much we start with in the bank account. Lowercase r is the annual interest rate. Lowercase n is the number of compoundings per year. Lowercase t is the number of years and capital B is the balance in the account at time T. I'd like you to try a problem using this formula. We're gonna start a bank account with $100 and accrue 5% interest, but we're gonna compound it every hour now. Calculate how much would be in the account after four years. Pause the video, come back when you've given it a try. OK, 
Okay, we're back. I'm going to start this problem by just listing out the five variables that might be in the equation and what we know and don't know. So the variables are capital P, lowercase r, lowercase n, lowercase t, and capital B. Capital P is the principal, what we start with, and that's $100. Lowercase r is the interest rate annually, which is 5% or 0 0.05 as a decimal. N is the number of compoundings, and we're compounding every hour of the year. We need to start with 365 days in a year and then 24 hours in each of those days. So that would be 365 times 24, which is 8,760 for our n value. We're going to do this compounding for four years, which makes t equal to four. And the question is, what's the balance at the end of it? So the balance is the unknown part. Let's assemble the formula now. The balance after four years is going to be 100 times left parentheses, one plus, and then r over n, so 0 0.05 divided by 8760, close the parentheses, and raise that to the nt power. So the power is 8760 times four. Now, if you're doing this calculation in Desmos, be very careful with that exponent and the multiplication. Desmos wants to bring the times four down out of the exponent. You may need to put that exponent in parentheses to make sure that it gets evaluated properly. The result of this calculation is $122 and 15 cents. If we compare that with the results we got above, when we did weekly compounding, we earned $122.14. Hourly compounding has only gained us a penny. So while it's still growing, it's not growing by very much.